I bought my first house in November of 19. Um, and I, I guess I, I don't understand why I didn't, but I started to listen to other podcasts and I started to hear stories of other entrepreneurial type folks, teachers, cops, firefighters, nurses, um, stay at home moms, waitresses who were getting involved in real estate and, you know, building out passive income streams. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, this is a real thing. Like, I, I can do this, you know, uh, because I had a ton of limiting beliefs. I mean, my mindset was the furthest thing from an entrepreneur uh, uh, possible, right? I mean, to this day, I still suffer from imposter syndrome. I still suffer from limiting beliefs, but I've done incredible amounts of personal growth and development work um, to, to get myself there. And what does that mean? Um, look, I had to, you know, join masterminds and mentorships and pay for coaches and, you know, surround myself with like minded folks because good evening. I want to talk to you today about from fighting fires to investing in real estate, the journey of Mr. Tim Lyons. Now, by way of background, Tim is the co-founder and managing partner of Cityside Capital LLC, which is a real estate syndication and investment company that focuses on commercial real estate assets that yield strong returns for all their investors. Now, Cityside Capital has partnered in over $1.4 billion of commercial real estate assets, including more than 6,000 multifamily units. Now, Tim also has invested as a limited partner in several multifamily, self-storage, and industrial land opportunities across the United States. Now, without further ado, let's get into the show. Mr. Tim Lyons, how are you doing today, sir? Tony, I'm doing great today. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for asking. So, a lot of my guests, Tim, include myself personally, have been intrigued to hear your story, sir. So, how did a gentleman go from firefighting to real estate yeah so uh tony listen i've I'm, I'm from the new york city area i've always been obsessed with fire trucks from the time i was a little boy um could never really shake it went to college right did all the things right got good grades i was pre-med for about 15 minutes until i joined a fraternity um and right around that time 9 11 hit and um being from the new york city area i mean 9 11 was a, a obviously a huge event right i just knew when I was up at college at Providence uh, College in Rhode Island, that I was just going to know so many people. And I did, um, including my uncle, who was a captain at the time, um, who was actually, you know, found alive under the rubble. And um, I don't know, something about that just made me want to be a firefighter. And I just, you know, said, look, I'll, I'll stay in college, but I just, I, I want to be a New York City firefighter. And that's what I did. Two weeks after graduation, I was in the academy and, um, you know, the, uh, the rest is history, as I say. When I got to the firehouse, Tony, so many of the guys um, and girls had second careers or second jobs. Um, they were contractors, HVAC te technicians, roofers, plumbers. Uh, one guy owned several bagel stores. One couple, uh, the, another guy owned some tanning salons. I mean, entrepreneurial spirit was abound in the firehouses. And I just didn't, I guess I never realized that. Um, so since I was pre-med for 15 minutes, I had an interest in medicine. Uh, I worked with a bunch of nurses and so I went back to nursing school, um, got my RN license and I worked for nine years as a ER nurse, uh, in a hospital. And, um, it was great. You know, listen, I had two W2 jobs and two vacations a year, you know, uh, retirement accounts got, got, you know, uh, paid into the bills are paid really Tony, nothing was wrong except for the fact that i felt like i was just not hitting my potential i felt like there was more out there i was slowly realizing that i couldn't save my way to wealth and that i something inside of me said you know i don't want to subscribe to the accumulation model of assets so that i could start living you know peacefully one day when I'm 65, you know, let me start pe peeling off 4% of, out of my you know, 401k. Um, so I just went down this rabbit hole of education, self-education. And what I came down to was you need equity to build wealth. And that was going to come from either owning a business or getting into real estate. Those are the two things that I distilled it down uh, to. So I got into real estate. I started with a three family property with a friend of mine, right? Cause I was super scared and nervous. I didn't want a single family rental. I wanted some extra units just in case. And um, 
I got my education. I became a landlord. I started the cash flow. I did better on my taxes. I was now sold. My wife was sold. And that laid the seeds uh, for my company, Cityside Capital. Now, how did you have the correct mindset, Tim? Because mindset is absolutely critical in life and everything, mindset. So in order to have and shatter limits and beliefs, you have to have the correct mindset. So what is your mindset, Tim, going into things like this? So, you know, I ended up listening to a podcast prior to July of 2019, and um, I bought my first house in November of 19. Um, and I, I guess I, I don't understand why I didn't, but I started to listen to other podcasts and I started to hear stories of other entrepreneurial type folks, teachers, cops, firefighters, nurses, um, stay at home moms, waitresses who were getting involved in real estate and, you know, building out passive income streams. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, this is a real thing. Like I, I can do this, you know, uh, because I had a ton of limiting beliefs. I mean, my mindset was the furthest thing from an entrepreneur um, uh, possible, right? I mean, to this day, I still suffer from imposter syndrome. I still suffer from limiting beliefs, but I've done incredible amounts of personal growth and development work. Um, to, to get myself there. And what does that mean? Um, look, I had to, you know, join masterminds and mentorships and pay for coaches and, you know, surround myself with like-minded folks because, you know, I think Jim Rohn was, you know, uh, the person who said, you know, you know you're, you're the average of the five people you spend the most amount of time with. So it's like, you know, I had to upgrade my, my, my little circle, right? Who's supporting me? Who's into what I'm doing? Who's into entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, business, you know, tactics, marketing, sales, money, capital raising. Uh, and once I did that and I upgraded my little circle of who I'm spending a lot of time with, and don't forget, this is during COVID, right? Okay. So, you know, it was a little easier for me, I think, because I had access to Zoom or Google Meet or whatever. Uh, so I could really, you know, in a day's time, I could meet with tons of people from all over the country, uh, in some cases, all over the world. And I was able to really dial into to some like-minded folks, which really helped me grow from a very scarce mindset to an abundant mindset over a period of, say, two, two years. See, and that's one fantastic thing right there, Tim. And I'm so, so happy that you said that about the about the abundant mindset, because I noticed in my life, a lot of people, even in some of my family members, they have that scarcity mindset. And then when that scarcity mindset sets in, they feel like, oh, I'm not deserving. I, I, I can't achieve this. And I try to tell my family members like, hey, don't worry about the scarcity mindset. Have that abundant mindset. You know, there's a book that I read uh, actually twice. I read it and it was so good that I opened it up again on page one. I started reading it again. And it's called Mindset by Carol Dweck. And if people have a chance, I mean, that is what we're talking about right now. Scarcity versus abundance. Um, you know, and she really goes through in a masterful way of, of, of talking about what it means to have both of those mindsets and how do you change from one to the other? So, uh, I don't, I don't know if you're an audible listener or a paperback reader, but either one will do, do the trick. I'm definitely an audible listener or whatnot. Cause yeah, like I used to try to read paper books, Tim, but at the five pages, it was gone. So would you explain Tim how massive action in life or either real estate can skyrocket you to the next level so look i'm i'm 40 years old i'm a married father of three little girls i'm just i'm like everybody else out there right um but if you needed a phd every time you had to make a decision nobody would ever do anything mm -hmm. and when it comes down to money um i feel like people are, and myself included we're very emotional uh we can lose sight of the you know the fundamentals of a deal an opportunity um an asset class because we're just scared to do something that we've never done before or my mom and dad never did it my brothers never did it people in my circle never did it who am i to think that i could do it right um so taking that massive action is like this for me at least once i know like 80 percent of something i'm going in right mm -hmm. if if i have a thesis that is, is supported by data and is supported by people that have gone before me. I mean, I didn't invent real estate. I didn't invent multifamily. I didn't invent self-storage, but people have made uh, significant wealth doing so. So if they could, so can I, but I had to be educated. And once I had that 80%, I'm ready to go, right? So that's how I got started with the three family. Now, listen, uh, Tony, I cannot, even though I'm a New York City firefighter, 
I'm not very handy with tools, right? I mean, my wife won't even let me hang a picture on the wall because I guarantee you within 48 hours that thing's falling out, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I wanted the landlord experience, right? I wanted to be that guy. I wanted that proverbial 2 a.m. phone call, which never came, by the way, for the clogged toilet. Um, and that's what I got, right? And then I had that proof of concept and I'm like, okay, now I have some momentum, right? And now you start building on that momentum. And I said to myself, all right, well, if I can do a three family, why can't I do a 30 unit? Mm -hmm. You know, so my second deal was a 42 unit in New York, Pennsylvania. Um, and I did a 42 unit and I said, man, if I can do 42, why can't I do 148? And that's my third deal, right? In Greenville, South Carolina. Um, and again, like it just started to ride that momentum, but I would never be able to even imagine 148 units in Greenville, South Carolina, if I couldn't get the 42 unit in New York, Pennsylvania, if I couldn't get the three unit that I started off with. So it's really, it's, it's deciding what you want and it's committing, it's defiantly committing to taking that action to, to realize what it is that you want. Kind of segueing off of that. Now, teams are a huge thing when it comes to real estate or like with the self stories, anything in life, you know, you can go further together as a team. What is your best recommended practice for building a good rock solid team? So um, I can speak, you know, from the investor side of building a team, right? So, you know, in, on the investing side in real estate, you have your active, uh, you know, owners and you have your passive, right? And um, I like to joke that I'm actively passive. Uh, with what I do now uh, in the in the capital raising space on the equity side of these deals. So when you're building a team, say as an active investor, right, even if you're getting started for your, on your first deal with a single family rental in a market near you, right? Mm -hmm. I'd argue that the, the property is probably like the fourth or the fifth thing that you should be looking at. Because people, you know, Tony will be like, no, I want to get into real estate investing. And the first thing they do is they pick up their smartphone smartphone, and they go to Zillow on the app or they go to, you know, whatever other app. And and, and they start looking at properties and saying, you know, all right, what, what's the rent in this neighborhood? And how much is that? You know, what's the, you know, principal and interest and taxes and insurance? And can I get no, 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 no. You know, you need a, a broker relationship, right, to bring you deals, right, to show you deals, to unlock the opportunities, even some of the off-market opportunities. You need a good CPA, right? And I would argue with anybody. And I talk to all, I talk to investors after raising millions and millions of dollars. I talk to very smart, very successful people that have CPA relationships because their dad used the same CPA or their brother uses the same CPA. And I always say to them, look, when you're investing in real estate, uh, you need a real estate centric CPA, right? Because the tax code is written as a series of incentives, not a series of, uh, of punishments, right? There's nothing to be scared of with the IRS and the, and the tax code. You need to align yourself with the tax code. That's how people create wealth. So I always tell them, if you broke your ankle, you wouldn't go to the hospital and ask for a neurosurgeon. You would go to the hospital and ask for a orthopedic surgeon, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with CPAs. You need somebody that understands real estate, not a generalist. Number three is an attorney, right? You need somebody that can advise you on entity structuring, sole proprietorship, you know, do you buy it in your personal name, do you buy it in a entity, LLC, what have you. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the benefits of each and someone to guide you through the process, right? Number four is you need a mortgage person, right? Because unless you're independently wealthy or you just, you know, have this cash buying um, thesis, you're gonna need financing, right? You wanna line that up ahead of time. You got those four things in line. Now, I'd argue the fifth thing is the asset class, whether it's single family, multifamily, whatever, and the deal, right? So there's a lot of things you need to get in, 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 in line before just going out there and putting offers on, on properties. Well, I noticed a lot of people, Tim, what they are kind of do, they won't have everything in alignment. They are kind of, you know, think it's in alignment, but then they'll kind of start giving up when it doesn't go the correct way. Now, what is one tip if someone were to start brand new, all right, and they want to do exactly what it is that you do? What is one tip that you would give someone starting brand new, fresh, how to get going? And new, I would say, you know, you need to be really clear on your goals, right? What are you doing real estate for? Are you looking for cash flow? Are you looking for appreciation? Are you looking for another career? Are you looking for a side hustle? Are you looking to be, um, 
you know, uh, your, your retirement? Are you looking for, you know, what is it that you're looking for real estate to do for you? And once you're clear, you need to hold that goal in your mind while you're going through this journey. Number two is education. You can't do anything in real estate or I'd, I'd argue anything like you wouldn't pick up a trumpet and just learn, you know, expect to know how to play if you didn't learn or educate yourself on how to play the trumpet. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing with real estate. You need to be educated, right? And you can start off with all the one on one books and take it from there, right? There's a ton of podcasts out there that talk to you about how to get started, you know? And, you know, when you say real estate investing, Tony, a lot of people don't even understand what that might mean, right? They might think that's single family rentals or condos, or some people might think it's, you know, fix and flips, or some people might think it's wholesaling, or some people might think it's note investing, right? So, really understanding what are the different opportunities inside of real estate both on the debt and equity side and then the the vehicle right do you want single families duplexes triplexes multifamily self-storage industrial medical office data centers you know there's so much uh, to get involved in but once you get clear on the education and you know that brings you to you know what side of real estate you want to start getting into it's then getting around the people whether it's virtually or in person, going to real estate meetups, um, going to conferences, or you know, taking a trip to whatever market that you may want to invest in and start building out that team, right? Property managers, brokers. Um, that's how I would get started, right? And so it's not overnight success. This is a long game, right? People want to watch HGTV or you know, Bravo, Love It or Listed, Fix This Flip, or whatever, whatever the name of the shows are. And they want to just do it overnight. And I, I'd argue that it's it's, it's, it's a long game. So um, it might sound like a long-winded answer, but I would say if you want to boil it down, it's education and then action. Now, a few more questions here, Tim, and I'll let you go here. Now, the next question is, if my listeners want to communicate with you, my listeners be like, man, I really want to get in touch with Tim. I want to really see what he's talking about outside of the Art of Customer Service podcast. How can my listeners, Tim, get in touch with you? So you can email me direct. Uh, I'm a Tim at CitysideCap.com. Uh, my website, CitysideCap.com. I have a podcast called the Passive Income Brothers Podcast. Um, and I'm on all the socials. Uh, so uh, or just Google my name, Tim Lyons Real Estate. And I'm sure you'll you'll come up with a lot of stuff. Uh, so those are the best ways to get in touch. And the last two questions, is, sir. Now, if you had to recap 2022, Okay. What is one word that you would use to recap 2022? Um, one word to recap 2022. I mean, holy cow, that was a year, right? Um, I would say mindset. You know, it's a, it's a very uncertain time. There's a lot of fear out there. Um, COVID, not COVID, vaccine, no vaccine, you know, economy, interest rates, I mean, debt. I mean, there's so much to do, right? But if you have that clear mindset and you hold that goal that we talked about in the forefront of your mind, um, that's at least what I did in 2022. And I think it served me well. Last question, Tim. If you had to recap this current year right here. So let's just say it's 2024 and you have to recap 2023. What's one word that we use to recap this year? Thrive. I love it. I, love I would it. say, right? I mean, because look, I mean, there's two types of people. There's people that are going to bury their head in the sand and give up. And there's two, and there's another person out there that's going to thrive, right? And and face adversity head on. And, and there's always an answer, right? Uh, to every point is a counterpoint, right? So, um, there's a bunch of seeds out there. I would say, you know, let them thrive, water them, garden them, pull the weeds out and uh, and just thrive in 2023. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. Me and my audience, we greatly appreciate that. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Until next time, I'll catch you later.